success of uh, working within the team structure here. Uh, we work with a methodology called Scrum. I don't know if you're aware of it, but Scrum basically means we have interdisciplinary teams. So programmers, artists, uh, testers, and designers on one team. Yeah. And what these teams do is they make specific uh, aspects of the game uh, or features of the game. Uh, so for a designer within that team, uh, your job mostly consists of creating the design documentation. Mm-hmm. So just thinking through the ideas, writing up the designs, uh, taking out the teams, getting them reviewed and estimated, uh, and then keeping an eye on your design as it goes through the development process. So as programmers implement aspects of it, Yes. You play through them, you check them, make sure things are working right, and evaluate them. Uh, if things aren't quite working the way you expected them to, or it's not quite as fun as you thought it would be, uh, then you can step in and start making some adjustments along with the team. Yeah. Uh, and just till the point where you're happy with it, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a working week. You, you, you keep an eye on stuff, you write documentations, Documentation, documentation, uh, and you just play test the game and just make sure things are on track. Okay. Um, my second question now is, how did you get started? Um, how I got started uh, was a long time ago now. Uh, I I applied for a job as a QA tester. Uh, basically, you know, and don't let any other people in QA. You know, you say this, but it's the lowest rung on the ladder in the games industry. You go in, you test the game, you play for a while. And that's how I got in. Uh, I got in at the bottom rung of the ladder, and from then I worked my way up, uh, just learning about the games industry as I went, learning about video game design, uh, because design is very different than being a player. Uh, I just worked my way up through the ranks. Uh, and that's how I got in. And um, I've just to, to a second part of my question. Is that a lot more difficult to do nowadays? Uh, I think the major way people get into games is through going to college uh, and doing games courses uh, and getting an education. A lot of games companies won't take people who don't have a higher education. Yeah, I, my, I myself is getting a higher education in game development right now, actually. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, my next question would be, what do you like about what you do? Uh, what do I like about what I do? Uh, that's too numerous uh, to answer, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, what I like about what I do is I get to work in a very different way to what I would have done in the past. Uh, I, I don't have to wear a suit and tie to work. I get to make stuff up for a living. It, it, it's fundamental level. Uh, I get to work with really interesting, creative individuals. Uh, and I get to, uh, and this is going to sound really cheesy, but, you know, for people who are really into games, and I, I assume you're one of these people, Yes. Uh, I, I get to have an impact on their lives. Now, it's a small subset, but I get to see people take pleasure in the things that I help to create. And that's really, it sounds like cheesy and but it really is. And when you know, if you go into a game store, you see something you've made, and someone picking it up and going to buy it. It's a, it's a nice experience, and just hoping that they're going to enjoy it. Mhm. Oh. Not if we have a pinball machine in the office. That's also pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you dislike? Um, that's a really easy one. Uh, the long working hours. Um, the, the volume of work that you have to put in. Uh, the games industry is still a young industry. Yeah. And we're learning, but the work-life balance is not ideal. Um, some people have figured it out, but as you progress up the ranks, you're expected to work. I do a lot of work from home. I, I just do a lot of hours, and that's the thing I like least about the games industry. It needs to grow up. Yeah. Um, the next question is how much, not to intrude, but how much money do you make? How much money do I make? I, I can give you a rough estimate. Um, I, I'm not sure I can do it in dollars. 
Uh, oh, let me just like, open my calculator. I'll do a rough calculation. Okay. Uh, do, 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 I, I, I get paid in euros. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, my dollar, I'm, it's been a while since I've been in the States. Oh. Uh, okay, so let me think. Uh, so, I'll give you a rough figure. Uh, it's between 50000 and 75000 no, that's from like starting out to like making the big bucks, right? Uh, making the big bucks is for a designer, the 75 uh, is, is on the higher end, it's not yeah. as high as you can go. Yeah. Um, but starting out, you're, you're gonna, actually, yeah, it's probably more like, yeah, that's probably about right. That's probably, uh, uh, probably about 40,000 uh, to 75,000. You know, from starting out to finish it. Mm. Um, that answers your question. My, uh, you know, I don't deal with people's salaries apart from my own. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what advice would you offer someone considering this career? Um, love what you do. Love games. Have a genuine passion for games. A designer who doesn't play games is not good. Uh, you've got to really care about this industry, you've got to care about games, you've got to, you've got to see them as the art form that they are, um, yeah. and you will make great games from there. The other thing is, get education. This is something that I tell a lot of people now. In my line of work, I have a lot of people like yourself asking me, how do you get into games? Get an education. It's very rare for people to come into it like I did. Go to school, get an education, and live a life. Uh, a lot of people play games, I'm going to get long-winded here, so I apologize. A lot of people, all they do is play games, and all they want to do is make games. But without a broad uh, exp life experience to draw on, the things you're going to make games about, or the ideas you're going to come up with, are going to be limited. You need to get out into the world and experience it, so you've got a broader range of experience to draw upon. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so basically what I want to say is, uh, love games, Get education. Oh, okay. Um, what what is a common mis uh, mis misconception people uh, have about you, about what you do? Uh, that I play video games all day long and do nothing else. <laughs> That's an easy one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know you uh, said before, like you know, you put a lot of time into it. But another question I was told to ask is, how much time do you get off or take off? Um, so, we're, definitely I am in Europe, so the European vacation days are a little bit different. Mm. Um, so, I take about a month off a year, uh, but I also live in Iceland, so I have to go home for like vacations and see my family. Yes. Uh, I know in the, if it helps, I know in the Atlanta office, yes. uh, they get the standard US vacation days. Uh. I think it's like two weeks a year or something like that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and and summer holidays as well. So how is it like taking off like during like when you're just actually working heavily on a project? Is that possible or? Um, no, um, it's possible in dire circumstances. Yeah. Uh, and it's possible if you plan really far ahead. Yeah. But most people don't want to leave during a really really hectic. Yeah. Uh, scheduled. More time. No, you want to see it through the end. It, it is possible, but. It's real for people to do it. Yeah. Um, what are your goals or dreams for the future? Uh, I would ideally like to keep being a design director uh, and start working on some other projects. Uh, start up a project of my own. Yeah. Uh, I want to get to call my own from start to finish because it's been a while since I've done that. Uh, a big project that I can lead. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, um, what else would you like people to know about what you do? Um, it's, it's actually a proper job. It's a, it's a proper career nowadays. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people see it uh, as just something a lot of mind child type people do. Uh, but it's a proper career. Uh, I'd like people to recognize that what we do here is as much a, an art form and as much of an industry as the movie and music industry. Yes. So, um, I see it's that you guys are CPP Games. You guys have put out EVE Online. Um, yeah. 
for uh, I have a question for you guys who are putting out PC exclusives. How, what do you see about the future of PC gaming? Uh, PC gaming uh, is. It's, it, people said it's dead. It's far from dead. Uh, PC gaming is evolving. I think the entire industry is evolving. If you look at the current market, games are not going to be platform specific anymore. You know, they're going to have to span so many different pieces of hardware. Uh, things like tablets and the iPad, things like that are, are becoming more and more mainstream. And more and more people are using them to play games. Uh, the PC gaming market has to adapt to that. Uh, it has to make games that can go between platforms, really. Uh, it can't be just, oh, we make PC games. It has to broaden itself out to all these new different types of sort of hardware that can run them. Uh, a tablet can grow your power so quickly mm -hmm. that PC games are going to be able to run on them fairly soon. Fairly high quality ones as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just one more, uh, two more questions. One is about the business model. Uh, and how do you see free-to-play working out on, on the PC? Do you think it's, it's beneficial? Or do you see anything at CPP? Uh, I think free-to-play is very beneficial if you look at something uh, that Riot has done with League of Legends. I honestly, when I came out, didn't have any idea how they were going to make money off that. Uh, if you make a good product, if you make something that people really enjoy and really love, and it, it happens to be free, but then you say, it's free, you can play the core game, but you can buy this, this, and this, people will happily go out and buy this to support you. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll buy it because they love it. Uh, they see it as a hobby. They spend so much time doing this. It's like anyone who, who plays golf or fishes. They go out and spend a lot of money on their hobby, uh, so I think a lot of gamers are realizing that this is our hobby and they can spend a bit of money on it. Mm -hmm. And I think the free-to-play model is going to take off like that. Uh, I think it's really beneficial because it means more people can do this kind of... Uh, they can get games out there and make money off them, essentially. Yeah. Um... One more question. Uh, the fate of PC gaming. Do you see the PC gaming declining, increasing due to games like yours and free to play? Or do you still see it the same market that hasn't grown much? Or um, The PC market is it's not going to decline. Uh, I think it's going to stay pretty much similar to the way it is. Uh, I can say really don't think it's, it's, it's Oh, sorry. It may grow, but in different ways. As I said before, the PC market is changing. Uh, you can have a browser uh, powered games on your TV now. Um, so it, it's how we define what a PC is. That's the question. But yeah. I think it's gonna, as it currently stands as the current box that sits on your computer, I don't think it's going to grow very much, but I don't think it's going to decline either. All right. Um, well, I, I think I thank you for letting me speak to you, and also um, I wanted to get your full name. Uh, it's Craig Scott. Scott. Oh, okay. Uh, thank I'm, you. Um, yeah, I'm not going to give you my middle name because it's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> well, um, thank you for just coming out and talking to me, uh, man. Uh, you really. Don't uh, worry, bro. It's all good. Um, just. Uh, make sure, like, your, your report's good and you make me sound good. That'd be good. Yes, yeah, I will. Yeah, <laughs> okay, you take care. You too. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.